Hello everyone, so today we will be understanding one of the important parasitic uh, organism which is Nigleria fowleri. So I do see that the name is missing. So let me, you know, first create uh, the title for this one, which is, as I mentioned, Nigleria, N-A-E-G-L-E-R-A, fowleri, fowleri. Nigleria fowleri is one of the important free-living amoeba it's it's free living amoeba it's uh, you know it doesn't require any host and if there is any host uh, that is most of the time is accidental so negleria fowleri is a free living amoeba that causes primary amoebic meningoencephalitis which is also known as pam it's a rare form of fatal brain infection so this organism can you know enter inside the human body and it can cause fatal brain infection this organism as you can see three morphological forms that is what we are going to discuss in this video they are present in fresh warm water and it can enter through nose during the activities like swimming if you're swimming in a pond which is contaminated with this amoeba this amoeba can travel uh, to brain through the nose causing severe inflammation and tissue destruction in the brain and that is why it can lead to headache fever seizures and even coma so patient you know can have serious brain damage and this is why it is also known as brain eating amoeba we'll understand all three important morphological forms of negleria fowleri and we'll also understand specific features as you have seen uh, listed over here right so without any delay let's get started okay all right everyone so as you can see we have our slide we have the illustration that uh, you know the parts of the illustration that i've already created now i will recreate the entire uh, you know illustration and i'll also try to explain all those things uh, and you can also follow along, you know, uh, you can also try to create these these different parts and at the end of the video, you will have all those illustrations that we have uh, we have uh, discussed pre previously. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start with the main, uh, uh, the body, body of the organism. So, so this is the, the body and we are discussing the first form in this case. As we have discussed, there are three morphological forms. One is trophozoid, second one is flagellate form and third one is cyst. So this is the trophozoid form. Okay, this is the feeding and the replicative stage of the parasite. And that is why it has locomotory organs. In this case, this is uh, lobopodia, right? So this is the part. And uh, I'll just put it like this. As you can see, this is the extension of this trophozoid structure. And here, let me also label this one lobopodia. So lobopodia, and I'm sure that you also understand pseudopodia. So it's similar to that one is the, is the extension uh, of the membrane structure which is helpful for the motion or the uh, movement of the trophozoid so this is the the outline of the of the parasite and this is the shape and it has variable shape usually the shape is amoeboid irregular it's variable in shape that's why i've created this one okay and it has lobopodia this is uh, this is a typ typical a pseudo you know single pseudopod it's also known as lobopodia it allows the motion of the the parasite uh, under various conditions as i mentioned this is the trophozoid form and uh, this is the feeding and the replicative uh, stage of this particular parasite uh, size if we discuss the size this is pretty large as compared to the other forms the size of this is 10 to 35 micrometer in length which is pretty high if you compare this with with bacterium and the size of the bacterium diameter of staphylococcus aureus is one micron so that means uh, it's pretty large and that's why they can also you know feed on bacteria and uh, we'll create those kind of illustrations also uh, you know they have food vacuoles they have different they can also feed on bacteria you know a lot of things are going on in in, in these organisms so first one is uh, the lobopodia this allows the motion second one let's create the nucleus and uh, the other uh, cellular structures that are present inside the nucleus so let's let's see this is the nucleus that uh, you are seeing right now the green part is inside the nucleus the outline of the the nucleus the nuclear membrane is there in red and then there is this uh, dot which is nucleolus and this uh, you know larger black dot black uh, circle is the is the karyosome right nucleus has a prominent uh, you know nucleolus structure and it is also surrounded by a clear halo region inside the nucleus okay so let me place this this entire structure somewhere right over here where it was it was in the illustration so it helps us so nucleus the entire the the bigger structure is the nucleus and uh, let me also label that so that it's clear for you so this is the nucleus next is nucleolus right and then you have the the karyosome also uh, karyosome is also present in there okay so let me label that as well and nucleolus 
okay so I'll, I'll put this okay so this is nucleolus which is somewhere right over here dark red structure and we all know what is the function of nucleolus it's basically the site for ribosome synthesis and then you have the karyosome which is uh, present inside this particular nucleus right over here this dark colored body right over here is the karyosome okay so as you can see we have quickly you know created a lot of things let me just you know arrange them nicely so that they are organized well okay so you can actually see you have lobopodia nucleolus nucleus and karyosomes right and uh, another structure that is present and this one is uh, obviously we know that cytoplasm is there which contains food vacuole so these are our food vacuoles and you know food is very important for everyone even tiny organisms they love to eat uh, food so right over here uh, you can see the food uh, food vacuole and inside inside those, those vacuoles you can see food particles also present so let me quickly label them as well so th this is what we are discussing is the trophozoite containing uh, structure for the locomotion and then you also have contractile vacuole uh, inside this organism sp spread it out throughout so that is why I've created multiple contractile vacuoles, as you can see over here, right? So I'll just directly place them and uh, we should be able to place them because it's it's designed in a way that it will not have any issue. You know, it will not interfere with any other structure. Okay, so I might have to move uh, my food vacuoles a little bit on that side, I guess. Yeah, okay. Okay, down there and this is it. I'll place nucleus a little bit on the top. So now you can see, and then you have other structures, organelles. You can also have, uh, you know, bacteria in there. You can have different types of structures. So these are all dotted uh, structures that you are seeing um, inside uh, this uh, amoeba. Okay. So all right. So I think our trophozoite is, is complete now. We need to label uh, label the contractile vacuole, and that will complete our trophozoite structure for Negleria fowleri. So this is the first form. What is the function? This is really important. As I've told you, we'll create those illustrations. We'll also discuss the functions of uh, different forms. F function of the trophozoite is, is the basically uh, the active and the feeding as well as the reproducing stage of the parasite. With this stage, parasite can multiply, it can feed, it can grow, it can actively move, uh, and also, you know, it's primary, it is, it is, uh, you know, primarily responsible for tissue invasion in humans. That is another role of this particular parasite. Next is motility. It can move using these structures and towards chemical stimuli. So this can basically sense chemical molecules and then it can move around in the body based on the signal, chemical signal that is, it is, uh, receiving and we have already discussed the size and i think uh, you know first form is pretty much uh, discussed already okay so i i've, I've uh, moved this one so label is also also labels they are also moved uh, not that much but a little bit right so okay so i think it's pretty decent everything is arranged now let's move on to the second one which is the flagellate uh, or temporary motile stage it's also known as temporary motile stage where you have flagella and it's it's amazing it's, isn't it the same particular organism is changing different different forms so this structure remains the same everything remains the same and but it, it requires uh, the flagella which is this and the si this is very very important we need to understand the size size of this is again it's longer it's 7 to 15 but it's still smaller uh, than the trophozoite st stage it is still smaller than the trophozoite stage okay shape is usually it's pear shaped so that is what i've created pear shaped with two anterior flagella so that is why you can you can see over here we have uh, designed two uh, anterior flagella structures and that is why i'm going to label them right over here so i can place and i can put an arrow to show them these are the flagella structures and what else we have we do have uh, uh, the uh, you know our nucleus with all the essential components and we do have the the uh, those dotted uh, structures that i've already created uh, just for the you know illustration in this one okay so i think uh, what else what else uh, function right so we need to understand what is the function of this particular form we have already discussed one distinct feature is it changes its locomotion from pseudopodia based locomotion to flagella based locomotion in this particular form that is why it's known as flagellate form Okay, the function. In this case, motility is rapid 
it's darting motion using two flagella so this motion is different next is function the flagellate stage is a temporary form that occurs with the trophozoite is exposed to a nutrient deprived environment so I, you know you can understand if the trophozoite is present in the environment where nutrition nut source of nutrition is is not sufficient nutri nutrients are are not present then this particular form is going to get converted into this form which is flagellate form so that is why it gets converted into more uh, you know rapidly moving kind of a form so that it can find different source this stage is not replicative so it is not going to replicate but this is going to replicate and uh, this is mainly for survival and also dispersal purposes to move from one environmental condition to another it can change and switch from one form to the another form which is pretty amazing if you if you ask me right okay let's move to the third form which is the dormant form which is also known as cyst form and this is spherical in nature right so we do have a spherical form in this case so this is the outermost uh, uh, lining and then let me recreate uh, you know uh, with all of my illustrations uh, because i need to show a thick thick wall so this is why i've used multiple circles so this is how I, I create you know the illustration of the thick wall so you have a thick smooth double layered cyst wall so layer one layer two okay so this is the key feature of uh, the cyst of nuclearia fowleri you have thick smooth double layered cyst wall which is right over here oops so let me use the arrow and the sizes size is again 7 to uh, you know 15 micrometer uh, size of the cyst the size is same for cyst and the flagellar form but the shape is different this is pear shaped this one is pear shaped this is spherical and next we do have nucleus obviously you know we need to have a genetic material so nucleus is very, very important and we do have some other structure although this form is metabolically inactive this is why uh, you know most of the the parasite they will acquire the form like this the cyst because they want to survive in the environment where uh, the nutrients are not available environmental conditions they are not favorable and then you need to you know uh, survive for some time so that they can find find an environment where nutrients are uh, sufficient now you will ask me why the infection is happening in humans so this is a free living amoeba it doesn't uh, you know care too much about the host it can live in the environment but if somehow you get in contact with nuclearia fowleri it can enter in the body it can directly go uh, through the uh, nostrils it can enter into the brain so that is uh, it has uh, you know nothing to do with uh, intentionally causing harm but if if it gets the environment it can uh, basically enter inside the human body Right? So it's completely uh, a kind of uh, scenario where it doesn't require a host, but it can infect the host if, if uh, you know, uh, conditions are met. Okay, what is the function? Those, uh, when we talk about cyst, it's a dormant and environmentally resistant stage capable of surviving in harsh conditions, such as, you know, it can survive in cold temperature, it can survive without food, it can uh, survive in dry condition, it can revert to trophozoite stage from here it can directly convert into this stage under favorable condition so once that signal is uh, you know given to this particular stage it can directly get converted into trophozoite stage so these are the major forms of nuclearia fowleri nuclearia fowleri is one of the dangerous pathogen you never want to get an encounter uh, with this particular pathogen it's free living amoeba that can cause you know serious brain infection it's also known as brain eating amoeba for uh, for that uh, reason be because it can cause serious damage in the uh, host so okay so i think we have discussed all the three forms we have all also created the illustrations we have also discussed the function of individual form and also shape and size of these form as well as uh, you know uh, how the transition happens from one form to another form and what is the purpose or the function of each form okay so I hope you got the information. Next, we will be discussing the entire life cycle of Nigleria fowleri. We can also discuss some of the interesting, uh, you know, clinical manifestation and how it can travel from uh, out outer environment into the brain. So we'll discuss that in the next uh, next video. So please stay tuned and please do watch that video so that you have uh, you know sufficient uh, knowledge about the uh, the uh, morphology as well as the life cycle of Nigleria fowleri. Okay. So I'll meet you in the next one. Till then, take care, everyone.